Here we have Game Maker Select number one, Nintendo. This covers Nintendo's experience at Space World 1997. A time when the hopes and dreams for the Nintendo 64 were still very alive and well. You're gonna see beta content here, interviews, some amazing renders, and also stuff from Mother 3, which of course never got released on the Nintendo 64. As you can see, there's that little Mr. Saturn on the bottom right hand side. Now, I was a little bit hesitant to show this off, mostly just because it's been online and available on archive.org for quite some time. And as we continue with Hard for Games, you know, we show more and more new discoveries and betas and prototypes. And, and every once in a while, when we just do a review or something that's not incredibly groundbreaking, we get comments like, why are you wasting your time on this? Why aren't you looking for Ura Zelda or Earthbound 64? Da 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 da. And, you know, it's comments like that that really kind of prevented me from showing something like this. But then, but then I thought to myself, you know what? Whatever. Who cares if it isn't exactly new? Maybe it's new to you. Maybe you haven't seen these images before or didn't know that this disc existed and you could download it right now if you wanted to and sort through everything. This is just something that really excites me, that I really enjoy, and I'm just going to show it off anyways because it's fun. Now, aside from the contents of the disc itself, I do want to take a second and talk about the jewel case and the art design here because it is real raw. I kind of like the whole card aesthetic on the front, but this horizontal vertical square grid thing continues on the back and the text is overlaid on top of it. They tried to do like a little outer stroke or drop shadow or something to make the text a little bit more readable, but it is pretty rough on the eyes. It is certainly a choice. As you can see here, we have a variety of interviews. Miyamoto is talking about everything from the Nintendo 64, SimCity, the 64DD. There's just a lot of content here. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this has actually been translated or not. I would be very curious to know, though. I love how this is Nintendo. <laughs> Very cute. I don't know who these people are. Maybe employees? Not 100% sure. I'm sure it probably says. Here we have a breakdown of the 64DD, SimCity, all sorts of information here. The Game Boy and the Game Boy Light, which of course we never saw the Game Boy Light over here in the US. Some Mario Talent Studio, Polygon Studio, Paint Studio, all that good stuff can be seen here. I really do, again, I know I keep mentioning it, these renders of the characters look really nice. Here we have some previews. Talking about the Game Boy camera and the Game Boy printer here. Again, the Game Boy Light, which is a big collector's item these days, especially in the US. We're kind of obsessed with it. 
probably a little bit less now that the modding scene for Game Boys has been so popular. Here we talk about the Nintendo Power Stations. You may have seen these Super Famicom cartridges that you can basically go to kiosks and fill up. We had talked in one of our N64DD interview translation videos that they were thinking about doing something very similar for the 64 disk drive as well, which would have made a lot of sense because they had them for the Famicom disk system, the Super Famicom, and it would make a lot of sense to have stations for rewritable magnetic discs for the N64 as well. Some information on the interface here. As you can tell, there's a lot of information. Unfortunately, a lot of it is beyond my knowledge. But it is very fascinating to me, at least. Again, there were some really high hopes for the disk drive. You know, Miyamoto and company really considered the disk drive to be an integral part of the Nintendo 64. They didn't really consider it to be an add-on. At least, that's what I gather from the interviews I've read. They were really banking on this, but the sales of the 64 were so bad, they just couldn't bring themselves to release it. At least on time. Or outside of the Japanese region, anyways. So many different sub menus here. Oh my goodness gracious. Lots of Pokemon stuff Pokemon Stadium. Very cool. Pocket Pikachu. Oh, that kid's so happy. I love it. I'm assuming they're all talking about their experiences or their their joy of having one of those. Here we go, Ocarina of Time. I kind of love this old logo, too. Some great images. One of the great things about these images is that, you know, we're not relying on scanned images from a magazine, which, you know, of course, is very second, third, fourth hand, depending on how they were sourced. Here we have a little history of The Legend of Zelda. Now here we're talking about DD, Disk Drive Software. Here is the Nat Attack sort of fly swatter minigame room that you may recall didn't make it into the retail version of the game, but was present in the prototype version that Gaming Legend 64 found and we covered on the channel. So very, very cool.
This mini game you see right here where your character is balancing on a ball didn't make it into the final version of the game, similar to the fly swatter nat attack game. Now, who doesn't like some Mother 3 content? All stuff we've seen before, but it's nice to see nice quality images of it for sure. Well, that was quite the rabbit hole right there. Now, lastly, we have a database. Now, these are all displaying wrong. I'm assuming it's because it's trying to pull from the alphabet that my PC is using, which is set to English. I'm guessing that if it wasn't doing that, that these would be proper Japanese names, but alas, they're not. But you can see on the side of what system these are supposed to be for. But everything's just kind of messed up right here. Again, all just sort of screwed up. However, there's a hardware list you can go through that makes a little bit more sense. And the hardware list gives stats on everything they produced up until this point. It's really nice. And there's one tiny little thing on the Virtual Boy. Poor Virtual Boy. They really wanted the Nintendo 64 to be sort of like this whole de facto system where you could just connect all sorts of things to it. But it just kind of never really turned out that way. So that is Game Maker Select 1 Nintendo covering all you need to see from Space World 1997. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. Again, this is not anything groundbreaking or new, but it's just something I really love. The images in it are so cool, and I'm curious to see what the interviews actually say. I'm, I'll have to take a look and see if they're actually translated, and if not, maybe make an effort to get them translated uh, and see what we can discover from them. That would actually be pretty cool. But Again, really appreciate you all watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, all that good stuff, and I hope to see you all next time.